Hello, and welcome to Get Yourself Published, Promote Your Research, a webinar series from the Himmelfarb Library Scholarly Communications Committee at the George Washington University, and supported by the Clinical and Translational Science Institute at Children's National Hospital, the GW School of Medicine and Health Sciences, the Milken Institute School of Public Health, and the GW School of Nursing. In this eight-part series, we explore tools, resources, and tips that can help you get your research published and ensure that it is widely read and cited. Our 30-minute pre-recorded bi-weekly webinars cover topics including publishing models, journal selection tools, predatory publishing, copyright, citation metrics, publishing identity management, bibliographic management tools, covenants, and more. Our webinars are publicly available and licensed under a Creative Commons license, although some resources discussed in this series are only available to faculty, staff, and students with access to Himmelfarb Library resources. Today, we will be talking about an introduction to predatory publishing. My name is Ruth Buter, and I am the Serials Librarian at the Himmelfarb Health Sciences Library. In this session, we will compare the qualities of reputable and predatory publishers, identify red flags you can use to help determine if a publisher is predatory, and develop the skills to recognize a predatory publisher's website and email communication. I'd like to start by providing a brief overview of open access publishing. There is a common misconception that all open access journals are inherently predatory. However, this is simply not the case. Traditional publishing models are paid for by the readers. Individual readers and libraries pay subscription fees in exchange for access to full text content. Open access publishers have shifted this reader pays business model to an author pays model. Open access journals charge authors to publish a manuscript. As a result, open access articles are freely available for anyone to read upon publication. Legitimate open access publishers conduct the same rigorous peer review as traditional journals. If you would like a more detailed comparison between traditional and open access publishing, I encourage you to watch the Introduction to Publishing session of this webinar series, led by my colleague Paul Levette. Until recently, there was no generally agreed upon definition of predatory publishing. In April of 2019, a group of 43 participants from 10 countries met to create a definition of predatory publishing. Participants included publishing society members, research funders, policymakers, academic institutions, libraries, patients, and caregivers who engage in research. The definition on this slide is the final product of this meeting. We will explore this definition in more detail during this webinar. The key aspect of this definition is that predatory publishers prioritize self-interest at the expense of scholarship. This emphasizes that the true goal of predatory publishers is not to advance scholarship, research, or science. Let's explore how predatory publishers prioritize self-interest at the expense of scholarship. Because the open access model charges authors for publishing their manuscripts, predatory publishers have found this to be an easy way to make money and have exploited this model in order to generate profits. By aggressively seeking manuscript submissions and then publishing all submissions regardless of quality, predatory journals rake in profits for each manuscript that is submitted. The more manuscripts that are submitted, the more articles these journals publish, and the more money they make. Articles are not subjected to rigorous peer review or are rejected based on quality. Doing so would decrease profits. Predatory publishers exploit the need for researchers to publish in order to receive promotion and tenure. 
they often target novice faculty members who are not yet familiar with the publishing landscape, and they use aggressive email tactics with promises of speedy publication to convince authors to submit manuscripts to their journals. While well, promises of speedy peer review may sound enticing, quality peer review takes time to complete. No peer review actually takes place prior to publication in these journals, regardless of claims to the contrary. In short, predatory publishers use deceptive and unethical business practices. So why is publishing in one of these journals potentially harmful to you, your reputation, and your career? A good starting point to answer this question is citations. Authors want their research to be read and cited by other researchers so it can become part of a larger scientific conversation. Citation counts are one way to measure the impact research has had on the larger scientific community. Articles published in predatory journals are not cited at the same rate as those published in legitimate journals. One reason for this is a lack of indexing. Most predatory journals are not indexed in databases such as PubMed, Medline, or Scopus. Inclusion in these databases increases the visibility of your research, making it more likely to be found, read, and cited. A recent study found that 60% of articles published in predatory journals did not attract a single citation during a five-year period. By comparison, just 9% of articles published in reputable journals had not been cited during a five-year period. In addition to your work not being seen by other researchers, your research will not be put through the same rigorous peer review process done in legitimate journals. The lack of peer review in predatory journals increases the risk of your work being published alongside mediocre or flawed research. Predatory journals tend not to have archiving policies. This means that your work might disappear without notice. If your article disappears from a publisher's website, promotion and tenure committees won't be able to find it when needed. Lastly, one famous predatory sting exposed the willingness of these journals to accept unqualified editors to serve on their editorial boards. One researcher who was fed up with the constant request from predatory journals to join their editorial board submitted her dog as an editor. Her dog was accepted onto the editorial board and once served on the editorial boards of seven different medical journals. Ali's research interests listed on her profile included the benefits of abdominal massage for medium-sized canines. Let's take a moment to compare the qualities of reputable journals versus those of predatory journals. Here is a list of qualities you can expect to find from a reputable publisher. A positive reputation within the field, a history of publishing quality research based on sound science, and a rigorous peer review process are the norm for reputable journals. Copyright, retraction, indexing, and archiving policies are also clear. Predatory publishers, on the other hand, publish poor quality research, and even though they may claim to follow a peer review process, it is unlikely that articles receive any sort of peer review prior to publication. Fee structures are not clear and are often misleading. Copyright, retraction, indexing and archiving policies are often non-existent or unclear. The definition of predatory publishing discussed earlier in this webinar lists some characteristics of predatory publishers. These characteristics, which I've highlighted in red font here, embody many of the red flags that I encourage authors to look for when evaluating whether or not a journal is predatory. In the next few slides, I'll discuss these red flags in more detail. One common red flag to watch for is false or misleading information. Predatory journal websites and email communications 
often present contradictory statements and fake impact factors. An easy way to determine if these statements are true is to do some fact-checking of your own. Don't just take the journal's word for it. Check the impact factor on Insight's journal citation reports. Look for the journal's physical address listed on their website and search it on Google Maps. Does the Street View image seem like an appropriate place of business for a legitimate scholarly publisher? Do an internet search for names on the journal's editorial board and see if the people listed actually claim to be members of the editorial board on their professional profiles. If a journal claims to be indexed in a well-known database such as PubMed or Scopus, go to PubMed or Scopus and do a publication search for the title. Does the journal or publisher follow editorial and scholarly publication best practices? Does the journal's website or email communication meet professional standards? Even if a website appears to meet professional standards, take the time to actually read the content. If you find spelling and grammatical errors, awkward language, or irrelevant text throughout the website, stay clear of the journal. If images appear to be squishy, fuzzy, or out of proportion, they may have been copied from another website and used without permission. These websites also tend to use a lot more flash media than legitimate journal sites. A lack of transparency is another red flag. Do they provide appropriate contact information, including phone numbers, email addresses, and a physical address? A web form is not sufficient. Are article processing charges clear? Can you verify editorial board members listed have actually agreed to serve in that capacity? Predatory journals are relentless in their aggressive and indiscriminate email solicitations. They send repeated emails that are filled with flattery. They often mention recent articles that you have published and claim that related submissions are needed urgently for a forthcoming issue. They invite submissions from researchers whose expertise is outside of the journal scope. For example, they may invite a cardiologist to submit an article to a dermatology journal. While it may sound like a lot to remember, there are resources available to help you protect yourself from these predatory practices. Links to the resources listed on this slide are available in the description of this video. These tools can be used to help you determine for yourself whether or not a journal or publisher is predatory. One useful resource is the email assessment tool. This tool can guide you in answering some quick questions to help determine if an email you received from a journal is trustworthy. Take a moment to review the questions on this slide. On the next slide, you can use these questions while looking at a real email from a publisher. This is an example email invitation from a predatory publisher. Thinking about the questions on the previous slide, what do you notice that might tip you off that this is not a legitimate scholarly journal? Feel free to pause this video to more fully evaluate this email. Let's take a moment to look at some areas of concern. The signature block does not include contact information such as a phone number or email address. There is awkward language throughout the email. The journal's scope is extremely broad. If you receive this email but are not working in the field of pediatrics, this journal would be outside of your field of expertise. In addition, they use both the British and American spellings of pediatrics. The font type and size are not consistent throughout the body of the email. The use of italics and bold fonts are also not used in a professional manner. A website assessment tool is also available to provide some guidelines for evaluating a journal's website. Some things to look for include correct grammar, 
spelling, and awkward language, a professional website appearance, and a verifiable physical address. You should verify the journal's listed impact factor. Look at the instructions for authors page and determine if the information provided is sufficient. Does the journal have a manuscript submission portal or do they request email submissions? A manuscript submission portal is the industry norm for legitimate scholarly journals. Using the information on the previous slides, what is your impression of the screenshot of this journal website? Feel free to pause the video for a moment while you examine this image. This is a screenshot from a predatory journal's website. Let's take a look at some areas of concern. One of the first things I notice is the use of cute images that take up a majority of the page that is seen without scrolling down the site. Cute images are not something I associate with scholarly journals. I also notice inappropriate use of capitalization in the description of the journal. The journal appears to have two different email domains, one that is a .com and another that uses .org. The journal claims to have a 0.631 impact factor. However, when I looked up the ISSN listed on Insights Journal Citation Reports, no journal was found with that ISSN. So this is a fake impact factor claim. As you can see, without digging in too deeply to a journal's website, I was able to spot numerous red flags that suggest that this may be a predatory journal. For comparison, take a look at this website from a legitimate scholarly journal. This site does not have unnecessary cute images. Examples of recently published articles are showcased prominently on the website. I was easily able to verify that the impact factor listed on the site is correct. It is also interesting to notice that the journal names of these two journals are very similar. Predatory journals often intentionally choose names similar to recognizable journals within the field. Overall, this is a much more professional website. If you would like more practice using the evaluation techniques discussed in this session, the description of this video includes links to case studies that can help you sharpen your skills. I'd like to leave you with some key takeaway points from this session. Remember, not all open access journals are predatory. Predatory journals exist to make profits, not to publish scientific research. Publishing in a predatory journal can be harmful to your reputation and limit the visibility and impact of your research. And finally, there are tools available that can help you investigate journals and search for red flags. You don't have to do it alone. Use the tools available and protect yourself from these predatory journals. If you have any questions about the material covered in this webinar, or have questions specific to your own research, please don't hesitate to contact me at rbueter at gwu.edu. Here are my references. Thank you for taking the time to listen to An Introduction to Predatory Publishing, a part of the Get Yourself Published Promote Your Research webinar series from the Himmelfarb Library. If you enjoyed this webinar, please join us for the next installment in our series, Copyright for Authors, which will be released on Wednesday, March 25th, 2020 at 12 p.m. Please fill out our feedback survey by following the link on this slide or click the link in the description below. Thank you for listening.